Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. This video, we're going to get into static classes, static methods, and properties. Show you how to do that, and then I'm, I'm going to show you the code first, and then towards the end, we'll get into talking about you know, whether this is a good idea, some legitimate uses, illegitimate use, and so forth. So the first point I want to make is that once you kind of go static with a class, this isn't 100% true, there's nuance to this, but in general, once you go static, you kind of can't go back because it sort of starts to take over everything that you're doing. So let me show you a quick example of this. We're going to create a class called library. And in it, we're going to create just a regular variable in here. We're not making it static. We'll just say something simple like, hey. And then we're going to create a static method. And we'll call this do stuff. And we'll do something that if you've worked with objects at all, you might just kind of naturally do and think is no big deal, which is to reference our very, our uh, property that we just created inside of our static method. And let's call this, uh, let's call this method, the static method. And let's fix our typos. Okay, so again, this is it's it's something that you know normally inside of uh, an object inside of a class, this would be a pretty common thing for you to do to reference a property using this. But if we come over here, we you can see we get a fail error that says using this when not in object context context. So what that means is that the this variable is actually referencing an instance of the object. So whenever you're using this, you're actually referencing the instance that you instantiated when you instantiated that class or instantiated that class. So in this case, because we're not doing that, there's no instantiation, we're actually just uh, calling that method directly, there basically is no this for you to reference. And so that's one of the things for you to get with static functions is that it changes the way that you sort of reference things and the way you work with your class. And of course, as you can see here, the way to create a static method or property is to simply add the static keyword in here. And then the way to call it is to reference the class name, two colons, and then the method or property name like this. Now, something that you might think, okay, well, if I can't do that, maybe I can do something like this. And we'll just reference our property in a static way. And so we'll do var like this. Well, if we do that, you'll notice that we now get an error that says access to undeclared static property. So this property is not declared as static, so we cannot access it inside of a static method. Now, even if you try, you might think, well, let me try this using the self keyword here. We do that again, we're going to get the same access to undeclared static property. The only way that we can make this work is to turn this into a static property like this. And now you can see we get the output that we're after. So Again, that's making the point that once you go static, you're kind of, you're sort of locked into it a little bit. Again, there's some nuance and the, there are some ways you can work around that. If you have methods that don't, don't, don't reference any other methods or properties in that class, then of course that's not going to, to this isn't going to be an issue. But when you're start trying to build a class where you're, you're using it somewhat like a, a regular class and you're referencing methods and properties and stuff uh, inside of other methods, uh, methods, then you once you declare one static, you kind of have to go all in uh, in that respect. So that's that's sort of how you create static functions and methods. That's some of the gotchas that are there. Now let me show you a maybe somewhat legitimate or example of how you might use something like this. So let's change this to date format. And let's change this to an actual format that we can use. So JS. And why? Let's change this to format date, and we'll put in Unix timestamp. And now we will do let's do date 
like this. Let's do change this to date format to reference the right property. I'll explain all this here in just a second, and then we'll do Unix timestamp. Oh, Unix timestamp. And let's return this and echo this. Okay, so and let's just check this real quick to make sure we don't have any syntax error. Library do stuff. Okay, yep. Format date. Oh. All right, let's try that again. Oh, yep, we need to pass in an <laughs> actual parameter here. All right, I think we should be good. All right, there we go. So what this does is we have a static property called date format, and we've set it to a, a format. This is just a kind of a standard format that you would find for the PHP uh, date function, which is this function right here. This is a built-in PHP function. And then all we're doing is we're passing in a Unix timestamp to this method, and we're using we're referencing our property that has our date format to set the format for the date. That's the first parameter that the, the date function takes. And then we're passing in our Unix time step that was pa passed in. And then down here, we're passing in just the current time now. So that's one way that you might use these sort of static uh, methods and properties because the idea here, uh, the assumption we're making is that this date format is something that isn't going to change. We're just setting that format. It's not going to be changed based off data from a database or user input or anything based off instantiation. That's the format that we want, and it's not going to change. That's sort of the, 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 the context in which static methods and properties start to make sense. When each instance of it, which really there aren't any instances uh, when you're working with, with static, that's the whole point, but each time you use it, the data do isn't changing. It's it's going to stay the same uh, for the most part. And so, uh, and then from there, we just use that to help us format the date. And the, the way that you might use this in an application context is, let's say you have a post uh, that you're pulling and, and there's a date associated with it and you want to format that date. Well, you know, you could put all of that that functionality inside of that object, and there's maybe a case for doing that, or have you could have an uh, another class that just does formatting, and you ins it's an instantiated class, and you just use that. And again, there could be uh, an argument made for that way. But another way that you can do it is with a static method like this, or a static class like this, where you can use this inside of another object, and you don't have to instantiate an instance of it. And then let's say you're using in the post object, but you also want to use it you know, inside uh, the comment class. So you can use it inside of both two different classes. You're not having to instantiate. You're not having to write reuse code inside of each uh, of those classes that formats the date. You have sort of a utility library class here that you can pull. You can easily use methods from in order to you know, format date. So you could have a format text or you could do all sorts of different things with this class. And the way I like to think of, of static classes like this is uh, a class that is sort of a utility class. It's something that really for easing, for formatting or, or, or maintenance or things like that where you might, you, you might want to do the same thing across multiple different objects. And so you don't want to reuse con be be reusing code across those objects and yeah you could create an instantiated uh class to do this and maybe maybe that makes the most sense but this is also an option for you uh to do that as well so again that's how to how to create uh static classes or static methods and properties that's some of the ways that that you might use them uh and and you know there's there's I think there's probably still some debate about whether this is the best way to do things or not. I'm not really going to get into that. I let you decide that, but this is how to do it uh, if you want to do that. Of course, if you want to keep going and, and learn how to build professional PHP applications using object-oriented programming, then I want to recommend that you check out my full object-oriented programming course. You can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash OOP. 
And I'm going to show you how to actually like the, 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 the real mindset uh, and how uh, object oriented programming is less about the code you write. And it's really more about application building and just a, a, a different way of looking at how you build your applications. And I think once you get that mindset, then it, it kind of clicks and it makes sense. And you just start thinking about your applications in that sense. And when you think about them in that way, the, the the data actually takes the the primary role and the code that you write sort of becomes a little bit secondary and a lot easier to write in my opinion. So I just think it's a lot better way of building the majority of your applications, especially as they rise in complexity uh, and so forth. And so again, if you want to learn how to build those kinds of professional applications, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash OOP to learn more uh, about that course. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that. If you do subscribe, make sure and hit that bell button so that you actually get notified when I release a uh, new video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.